Okay, if you're watching this video, you're in my biology class, and we're going to be performing the liver enzyme catalase lab activity. You know, I want to continue to search for ways to make our 53 minutes every day more meaningful. So instead of doing this pre-lab discussion in class, I, I want you to watch the video, and so we can hopefully use our class time more efficiently. So I want to try it and see how this goes. So by the end of the video, you should be able to answer the following questions. What are enzymes? What is the function of the enzyme catalase? Where can we find catalase? What is the formula of hydrogen peroxide? When broken down by catalase, what does hydrogen peroxide become? Why aren't your cells poisoned to death even though they create toxins? And how can you visually tell if hydrogen peroxide is being broken down by catalase? You should have your lab handout with you side by side as you continue this video. So pause the video, go find your lab handout, and then unpause because we're going to continue in three, two, one. Okay, so the purpose of this lab, and, and this lab will hope to demonstrate the actions of an enzyme called catalase and how enzymes can be affected by their environment. You know, pretend here's a molecule, this chain of hexagons. Pretend this is a molecule. Here's an enzyme called catalase. I've chosen animated scissors to represent the actions of catalase, because what catalase can do is take a big molecule and break it down. Well, let's go into more detail. Okay, so now I'm reading along from your lab handout. So look on your lab handout and follow along with me. What would happen to your cells if they made a poisonous chemical? You might think they would die. In fact, your cells are always making poisonous chemicals. They do not die because your cells use enzymes to break down these poisonous chemicals into harmless substances. Enzymes are proteins that speed up the rate of reactions that would otherwise happen more slowly. The enzyme is not altered by the reaction. You have hundreds of different enzymes in each of your cells. You know, here's that same animation with the hexagons, but let me label, pretend that this big chain of hexagons was some toxic, harmful molecule. Catalase an enzyme called catalase, again illustrated by my animated scissors, can actually take a harmful molecule and break it down into two smaller harmless molecules. So, so far, catalase seems pretty wonderful. Well, let's go into more detail. Okay, again, according to your lab handout, so follow along with me, please. Each of these enzymes is responsible for one particular reaction that occurs in the cell. In this lab, you will study an enzyme that is found in the cells of many living tissues. The name of the enzyme is catalase. It speeds up a reaction which breaks down hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, a toxic chemical, into two harmless substances, one water and two oxygen. If the cells did not break down the hydrogen peroxide, they would be poisoned and die. In this lab, you will study the catalase found in liver cells. You'll be using either chicken or beef liver. In fact, we're going to use beef liver. I've tried it with chicken liver, and I don't always get the best results. So we're going to use beef liver. It might seem strange to use dead cells to study the function of enzymes. Well, this is possible because when a cell dies, uh, the, the enzymes remain intact and active for several weeks, as long as the tissue is kept refrigerated. So the chemical reaction we're going to follow looks like this. Two molecules of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, which is a toxic molecule, will yield in the presence of catalase, two molecules of water and oxygen. So when we look at this animation here, here's two molecules of H2O2, here's two molecules of hydrogen peroxide, and as the lab handout says, hydrogen peroxide is toxic, and this can actually build up in our cells and actually poison our cells if we don't have a way of, uh, of getting rid of it. Good thing we have this enzyme called catalase. Catalase will take poisonous hydrogen peroxide and break it down into harmless molecules of water and oxygen. So catalase is wonderful at taking this toxic peroxide and converting it, breaking it down, changing it into two molecules of water and oxygen. So where do we get catalase and hydrogen peroxide from in order to work with it in this lab activity? Well, liver. 
liver that you can buy at the store at the grocery store is high in catalase and I'm just going to go down to a grocery store buy a pound of liver cut it up into tiny pieces that can fit into test tubes and each piece will contain a lot of this enzyme called catalase and hydrogen peroxide well you can buy that at you know CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens or any store like that so that's where we're going to get the catalase and the peroxide from well how will we know if the catalase in the liver is actually neutralizing the hydrogen peroxide. Well, let's remember this equation. Two molecules of hydrogen peroxide in the presence of catalase will yield water and oxygen. Well, what is the peroxide converted into when it comes into contact with the enzyme catalase? Well, like the equation says, it's converted into water and oxygen. But, you know, we can't really see visually hydrogen peroxide turning into water. Hydrogen peroxide is, clear, is a clear liquid. Water is a clear liquid. But what we can see are the oxygen forming because bubbles should be released. So in our test tube over here, when we add some peroxide, which is toxic to the test tube, and we add a piece of the cut up liver, when the liver with the catalase in it comes into contact with the peroxide, we should see air bubbles begin to form. That's our visual that we know this chemical reaction is occurring. We'll see air bubbles forming, which is the oxygen gas. Well, what are we actually testing in this lab activity? Well, in my animation, we're going to put a normal piece of cut up liver in a test tube and then a piece of liver that was stored in a really cold environment. And so we're going to test what effect does temperature have on this chemical reaction. You know, the normal liver might produce this amount of bubbles right here. If the liver stored in the cold temperature produces, notice, the same amount of bubbles, well, then we know cold temperature has no impact on this chemical reaction. If our normal liver produces this amount of bubbles, and the liver stored in cold temperature produces a much smaller amount, well, then we know that the cold temperature has a big impact on the effectiveness of catalase and the overall chemical reaction. If our liver stored in a normal temperature produces this many bubbles, and the liver stored in a real cold temperature produces a lot more bubbles, well, then we know cold temperature encourages and speeds up the enzyme catalase and the chemical reaction. So we're going to learn what effect temperature has, not just cold temperature, but also warm temperature. Well, besides temperature, we're also going to uh, kind of study what effect does the pH of the environment have on the enzyme catalase and its ability to perform this chemical reaction. Because we're going to take a piece of acid, a liver that was stored in an acid environment, and a liver that was stored in a basic or an alkaline environment. And we're going to see if the chemical reaction is altered at all. So we're going to see what effect temperature and pH have on the activity of this particular enzyme called catalase. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you're looking forward to this lab activity. You know, pause the video. You should be able to answer these seven questions here. And if not, maybe watch the video over again. Discuss it with a classmate, with a friend. Uh, come and see me for help before school or after school if you need to also. Go ahead and pause the video, and I'll see you in class. Thanks for watching.